Um, well, hello everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, joining and listening to this episode of the podcast. Um, this is a little different for me because I'm usually live streaming. Um, but uh, my name is Bravin, or uh, DM Chronicles. I will be the DM for uh, this session of um, Parallel to Anywhere. Uh, and then um, if you two would like to introduce yourselves. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm B. I will be playing Treffer as I always am, uh, and just usual nonsense coming from me. Cool, cool. Well, first off, thanks for having me on. Uh, hello, everybody. I am Jack. I will be playing Doc Rizzo and a whole assortment of little uh, little tech drones that fly about and do all sorts of wonderful things. I'm super excited for this episode. Uh, I'm also a streamer as well. If anyone's as interested, you can find me over at my Twitch channel, twitch.tv slash the people's ascension, where I do all kinds of, you know, nerdy things throughout the week, uh, as well as a Dungeons and Dragons game every Saturday. So feel free to check me out there or on Twitter, uh, PPLS Ascension on Twitter. Anyway, let's get in with this. Absolutely. So, uh, let, let's jump right in. Um, so Trevor, uh, as you uh, are leaving your previous uh, adventure and um, bamfing into a, a new universe, a new point in time and space, you find yourself uh, completely in the dark. You can feel um, sort of like a hard uh, metal floor beneath your feet. And the ground um, is slowly pitching back and forth gently. Um, there are a number of small, maybe like fist-sized objects that are sort of swarming around your feet. Or, or not swarming, um, but just sort of piled up like up to your ankles that you're standing in. Uh, it's not one thing, it's another. All right. Uh, <clears throat> He would immediately just start looking around, seeing if there's anything he could do slash notice that could help him out, you know? Uh, does he have any kind of light? Um, it's like pitch black. Uh, he does have dark vision. I don't know if that's an immediate help. Uh, oh, okay. Um, he's yeah, a half. So, oh. gotcha, gotcha. Okay. Um, so looking around, uh, it seems that you're in... Uh, a metal box of sorts. Um, there is a there are walls and a ceiling to sort of create like a long rectangular room, sitting at a bit of an angle, um, and uh, the floor of uh, this room that you are in is covered in rubber duckies. What? I huh? You know, considering where I was last, this is almost less weird. But, you know, he, like, grabs one and squeaks it. <laughs> <laughs> and he, like, it squeaks like any other rubber ducky would. How big are they? Are they, like, uh, the little ones, or are they, like, your average? Duck? They're, like, the average size, like, about the size of, like, your fist. He stuffs one in one of his pockets and just goes, like, I'm saving you for later. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> um, you hear, uh, from one of the ends of the room, you hear a loud grinding sound, and uh, after a few moments, um, there's sort of like a crack of like something breaking. Um, and then one of two large doors at the end of the room that takes up like the entire wall opens up, letting in bright sunlight. Uh, um, sudden changes. Okay, well... I got what I came here for, and he like, squeezes the ducky once more and puts it back in his pocket and just goes, time to see what's out there, and just meanders on out. <laughs> okay. Um, as you walk out, you see right on the other side, uh, directly outside, uh, there is uh, a person that had just sort of like opened the door there for you. Um, Jack, if you'd like to introduce your character. Uh, yes, Doc Rizzo. Uh, let's see. Let me pull up Doc Rizzo's description, because I, I, thought, I thought you were going to introduce him. Uh, yes, Doc Rizzo is a sort of middle-aged man, late 30s. Uh, real, real scruffy, real uh, kind of 
dirty mechanic vibe. He has this grease-covered tank top, this these tattered uh, cargo pants held up with a utility belt that is stuffed full of different components and uh, and and tools. Most notably, you notice that he is cybernetically augmented. Uh, the the first thing you notice probably that his right hand has been replaced with this large metal hand gauntlet almost that looks like it has a number of different servos that can move and detach different uh, implements coming out of different fingers and whatnot. Uh, he is also moving with the assistance of a waist rigged uh, exoskeleton. Well, it doesn't look like his legs are all that useful. He gets around using this this exoskeleton that's attached to his legs. Uh, and he does have a mechanical eye. Uh, I'd say the first thing you notice is a small, uh, a small sort of helicopter drone flies in to meet you as you were walking out of this cargo container. And it buzzes right up to your face flashlight at you and sort of hovers in the air, moving moving back and forth and kind of rotates around your head for a little bit. Okay, you're interesting. And he would follow it like he's hey, follow like a bug. There's someone in there. Oh, hello. Hello? He would follow the drone. Come on out there. How do you even get in there? That's a good question. <clears throat> he would follow right on out and just kind of out the box. Okay, so as you step out, um, the first thing uh, that hits you is sort of a salty breeze that washes over you, and, and the, the bright sun high up in the sky is shining down, revealing before you a landscape of decrepit fishing boats, uh, shipping containers piled up haphazardly. And just piles of garbage and other random materials that are strewn about. Um, you can see a pile of ruined wooden desks here. There's a rusted es- excavator over there. And a stack of empty vending machines set up like Tetris blocks in the distance. And you notice too that the entire landscape landscape is slowly bobbing and shifting. And you come to realize it's actually all floating on the sea. And even more noticeable than that, looming over everything else is a giant container ship. Its sides are splattered with random colors of paint as if there had been giants that had used it as battleground for a paintball match. Um, In the sparse spots where the paint mist, um, the hull is covered in rust or barnacles, concealing any name the ship might have once had. Um, There are countless shipping containers that seem to have been arranged to create a ramp or sort of pathway up onto the deck of the gigantic vessel. And you can, uh, in front of the uh, bridge of the ship, there are four towering cranes protruding from the deck. Um, And from each of the cranes is swinging a huge electromagnetic... uh, Sorry, I got a little tongue-tied there. Electromagnet. Um, Some of them with random hunks of metal and garbage stuck to them. Uh, from the one all the way in the front, uh, from that magnet hangs an entire yacht, um, a smaller one, but still a yacht, suspended above that pathway leading up onto the deck. And the yacht's name is uh, clearly visible on the side of the boat, Intrepid. Well, <clears throat> he gives the place a once over and then kind of looks back to, to Doc and then looks back at this landscape and goes, is it as high tech as the time and space, but still definitely, I would say almost around my world's tech. Interesting. Huh. Anyway, hi, how are you? What are you on about, kid? Oh, how do you get uh, here? Well, um, I could. I you take one of my ducks. He like instantly puts his hand to the pocket with the giant protruding duck silhouette, and then like places it back in the box. In fairness, I didn't know they were yours. They're a highly valuable commodity, those ducks. Really? They don't wash up very often. It's taken me a lifetime to collect all those ducks. This is an interesting universe already. Okay, um... You're a strange one, kid. You know, I get that a lot. Hi, my name's Trev. Doc Rizzo's the name. He grabs 
grabs one hand and slams his big heavy iron mitt into it and shakes you vigorously. Welcome to my scrapyard. What are you in the business for? You need a new hand? I'm really good at new hands. Clearly. Um, no, I'm good with my hands. He kind of like wiggles them both to show that they both function properly. And then just kind of, uh, I just kind of stumbled in here to be honest with you. Uh, don't worry about it too much. Once my watch gets to 100%, I'll be out of here. So, guess I'll just be hanging around until then. Just right. a pit stop. Uh, sure. Be careful of all the rust. Ah, uh, no, I'm sure it's fine. Oh, wow, it is a lot. Um, so, as the two of you are talking... Uh, Trevor, you feel a tug at, uh, it almost seems like your watch itself is tugging at your arm, sort of pulling itself up into the air. What? And you sort of, uh, this perfectly circular shadow, um, sort of, uh, starts to wash over the two of you. And uh, the band of the watch begins to slip, and then suddenly the watch flies straight up. And you look up, and you see it smack into the bottom of one of those large electromagnets, now hanging directly overhead. Uh I very quickly grab onto my my rotocopter and hold it under my arm. Ah, these damn magnets, (laughs) they're all trying to steal my stuff! (laughs) You feel it getting pulled upward. Um... And uh, you grab that one, but your uh, your tiny little beetle drone gets sucked up into the magnet as well. No, not tack! And then the magnet begins to swing itself away, and you see it turn all the way around until it's hanging all the way back by the bridge of the giant container ship. We have to get my watch back. I gotta get tack back. Well, then it sounds like we have a mutual... Uh a mutual plan here. If I don't have that when that thing goes to 100%, that thing's gonna vanish and I'll be trapped here. Whatever you say, kid. Uh, Long story short, I need it. As fast as possible. I don't know how much magic your world has, but more magic around it means it's gonna charge faster. You say a lot of complicated words. I will... Since we're going to be walking and talking, I can definitely give you the summation. But first, how do we get to that giant magnet? Well, we got a bunch of trash and boats to climb over, and it's not always the most simple, safest route. I tend to stick to my junkyard when I can. There's all kinds of mess of trouble out there, so I guess, uh... Stay close, kid. That I can do. Alright. Guess this time I'll be... <clears throat> Hopefully we'll somehow be able to get all this in the show. Anyway! Let's let's get going. So the two of you, um, begin to head out, uh, towards the container ship. Um, it's I make sure definitely... To, I make sure to swing by and pick up Bulldog on, on the way. Okay. My, my walker drone. He should, um, he should be a little heavy for the magnet to super quickly scoop up, so I'm gonna bring him along. Gotcha. Um... Yeah, so walking, uh... Or traveling toward the ship, um... It, it is definitely a hazard journey as there isn't really any semblance of a path or a road um, leading up at least to that sort of large ramp in order to get on um, to the deck of the container ship. Um, And it doesn't help that this isn't solid ground either. Everything is slowly sort of shifting and bobbing on the sea as you're uh, traveling across, and sometimes you have to go around a sort of gap uh, where the ocean is exposed in this sort of vast landscape of garbage and random trash that washed up from the ocean. Um, 
But after uh, about 30 minutes of some uh, maybe uh, extensive exercise, um, you do make it to the base of the ramp to the container ship. Um, and from then on, the, the, the path is pretty smooth. I will say that during that entire time, anytime Jeff had breath, he was trying to explain to Doc the whole, like, his whole backstory and everything. Like, oh, you know, it was a school project, the watch can move anywhere through the multivert, blah, 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 blah. You gotta lay off the smokes, kid. You're too young for this. <laughs> you know, I'm slowly realizing that that's probably going to be everyone's response until the podcast goes up. Is that a type of boat? Like a pod oh. boat? Like a submersible? You guys really only think in boats, don't you? We got a lot of boats. It's about I the think... only thing that's left. Oh. Oh. Mm. Shouldn't have joked about that then. Apologies. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, here's hoping that the watch will still be there when we get to the magnet. Well, unless the scavers got it. The what? Well, it's a fairly frequent thing. These magnets, they're always revolving around all over the place. You time it right, you can get there and grab some really nice stuff that gets sucked up. You notice he moves a lot faster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold up, kid. These, uh, these old legs don't move like, uh, well, legs. <laughs> Okay, you're right. Sorry, but you, then you shouldn't have told me about that. <laughs> um, as uh, as you, you the two of you are climbing um, the ramp up to the deck of the ship, uh, you end up passing by other people um, that are traveling down. Um, and although it may have been hard to tell from a distance, it seems that this is actually a pretty... Um, well-traveled road, and there are, um, all kinds of people. Uh, you notice that not two faces are the same, um, in this place. Um, you see humans and elves, dwarves and orcs, goblins and goliaths. And when you get up to the top of the ramp, to your surprise, it seems that there's almost sort of a ramshackle put together city set up onto the deck of this container ship that stretches all the way across from one end to the other. You watch like the light leave Trev's eyes as he realizes how many people could have gotten the watch by this point. This is bad. You can see um, the magnet that took your watch um, is sitting still, um, having swung uh, back up and over the bridge all the way at the back of the ship on the other side of the city just the defeated like hands on knees bent over very tired kind of position that he catches his breath for a second just says it's on the other end of this town doc we'll get your your drone and my watch back in no time cool all right well uh let's go kid Stay close, you're a little weird, you know? We don't need anyone picking you up for anything. What do you mean? You know what? Better that I don't ask. Let's go. Mm. Uh, sort of walking through a um, uh, semblance of a street that stretches across uh, this deck and splits into this city. Um... You start to see more and more, as you travel deeper into the city, more and more uh, stands and shops and different sort of just like piles of junk or random materials that have been scavenged from uh, the landscape and the environment around to be piled up and either traded or bartered or sold to the populace in order to get by in their day-to-day -day lives. and. All of the buildings and structures you can tell are put together using rotted wood or scrap metal or random materials. There's, I mean, one stand that seems to be uh, a bunch of nailed together dry rotted office chairs. Um, 
and it seems like people in in this place in Intrepid just sort of get by with what they can find and what they can scavenge from their environment. You never told me what happened. What do you mean? What happened? Like to make all this happen? Rotted, lo- rotted office chairs and living on boat remains. Like, has it always been like this? Long as I can remember. Hmm. Guess every world is different. Eh. Are the people getting by? Yeah, I suppose everyone gets by in their own little way. I mean, there's all kinds of junk out there that washes up on occasion. Kind of a, a little competition to see what you can you can grab before somebody else does. Make something out of it. Trade it. You know, there's a place down there that makes the best ramen. The ramen bureau, made entirely out of bureaus. It's fantastic. I put together a stove. I get free ramen whenever I want. We should swing by. Once I get the watch, that is tempting. <clears throat> right. Yes. Uh, attack and your watch thing. Yep. Is uh, the oh no? He starts realizing like, yeah. Oh, there's so many ways this could go wrong. We need to move. <laughs> oh, sort of... All right. Uh, bulldog, clear path. Wait. <laughs> Four-legged drone, sort of. That's that's been kind of clomping beside us. Just like kneels down and just takes off like a bulldog and starts like hopping about, and bumping into people and pushing them out of the way. Mm-hmm. I'm just the sort concerning... of running through the street. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but you know the concern image of like person with like their this like their hands together, like touching their nose a bit, just like. Mm-hmm. Treff is doing that as he watches this robot dog just terror. <laughs> As it runs and tears through the street and through the crowds and people are sort of jumping out the way and you hear you hear one guy go, Not again, dog! I don't know where you lay about. <laughs> um, you notice up ahead, not too far ahead, uh, a young uh, dwarvish looking girl, couldn't be maybe five or six years old, um, playing in the streets uh, with, um, looks like a golden retriever. And uh, she has a little pink flower in her hair. Um, and as uh, as your uh, sort of robot dog runs through the streets, the golden retriever immediately takes notice and starts chasing after it. And then the little girl running after as well. Oh, this is a mess. Okay. <laughs> and you One hear her yell, Wait, c- come back, Kevin! Treff like, immediately realizes like something has to be done here. And he's just like, okay, okay, um... <clears throat> it, he, yeah. Uh, he's going to, like... He's going to use the blink spell to, like, get himself trying to get between the robot dog and the regular dog. Okay. And just, er, I guess, yeah, blink would do the same thing. He would just phase from next to Doc, right in between the, the Golden Retriever and the Robot Dog, and be like, in front of the Golden Retriever, start petting his face, just like, good dog, good boy, just like, distracting him long enough for the Dwarven Girl to catch up. Okay. So you immediately disappear from your spot and appear um, between the, the Golden Retriever and the robotic dog that it had been chasing, um, and it immediately stops and, like, crouches down in sort of that playful way that uh, that dogs do and starts like jumping excitedly around you and the little girl finally catches up. Ugh, you got a fast one. <laughs> Trevor, don't run off on me like that. That's the name of your dog? Yes. Huh. Is, that, is that weird? Oh, no. It's, it's kind of my name, too. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, coincidence. He starts petting the dog just like, that's how we got along so quick, isn't it? <laughs> I'm, uh, Brinza. Nice to meet you. Uh, my friend should be coming any second now. His, you know, his legs aren't as good as my magic. Sort of looks over as, uh, Doc Rizzo catches up. Uh, don't you go badmouth on my legs, kid. I, said I worked hard to, on these legs. I said compared to magic. <laughs> Not compared to me. Anyway, Trevor, you watch yourself. Point at the dog. Oh. I need to replace one more of my bulldog's legs, and I'm gonna use one of yours. Again. 
the uh, dog starts um, jumping around you and like trying to climb up like the side and like trying to lick you. Uh, I'm pushing at it and trying to get away without tipping over. <laughs> Chef just kind of like pets the dog a bit more and just kind of turns to the dwarf. He's like, You take good care of him, okay? I will. Come on, Connor. And then the dog follows. She gives a new name to that dog every five seconds. Huh. I thought I'd made a connection. <laughs> <laughs> and he uh, immediately just kind of like stands there for a second, not sure how to feel that he like something clicks. He just goes like, Wait, right, the watch. <laughs> you hear, uh, from the other side of the street, um, someone yells at you, Hey! Hey, you! Oh, no. You over there! <laughs> he, immediately starts, he immediately starts looking in other directions, like, Who could you be talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, you catch the sight of, uh, this bald human woman. Um, set up with, like, a small wooden crate, and, um, uh, uh, it looks like there's, um, a bunch of dice set onto the table, or on onto the crate, and she's just sort of sitting behind it cross-legged. Hey! Wanna play? Yeah. Play what? Yeah, come on, come over! <laughs> it's you, easy! You see him, like, head in hands <laughs> realizing he kind of can't say no just like I'm gonna be stuck here forever okay ha he come would, on don't be shy he would look to Doc and like the help me but he would walk over towards the lady <laughs> hi how can I you want me to play yeah have a seat right here Okay, how, how long's the game? Oh, it's quick and easy. I'll teach you. Okay. It keeps like the, the, uh, gambling type by chance. You seem like it. Well, it's <laughs> easy. You can double your money. Easy. You aren't trying to roll my new friend here now, are you? I'm wise to your type. Oh, no need to be suspicious. I've got clean hands. She sort of like puts both her hands up to show. Yeah, that's extra suspicious. Everything around here is covered in rust and dirt and dirt and grease. And you can I'm see that her hands you. are too. Uh. They're not clean at all. The more the more he talks about everything here is covered in dirt and grease, you see like more and more of Trevor's soul leave his body. <laughs> As he's just like, I'm gonna be here forever. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, one round. There's no harm in it, right? Okay, one. One. What's your name, kid? Uh, just call me Trev. Trev? Mm -hmm. The name's Fentina. Nice to meet you. And this is very easy. And she pulls uh, um, uh, some more dice um, from behind the table and sits them up. And you can see, looking closer, um, these aren't just like regular dice, at least most of them aren't. It seems that there are different kinds of dice uh, with different numbers of sides. Mm -hmm. um, almost like a traditional set of uh, what you would see as like D&D &D dice. I feel like, because Treff's world is like, <clears throat> where he comes from is like Faerun, but in like, like Faerun when it gets to the point in time that Onward would be a thing. So like I feel like like sets of dice for that maybe not specifically for D and D but for similar esque kinds of games probably do exist. So this is not on this is not foreign to him as a concept. But he is like he is fascinated that they're here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's seen them for like probably what would be like sci-fi games because that would be what would be weird to those people. You know? Yeah. So it's just okay. Like, so. Do you want to play uh, for money or for trinkets? He starts realizing he does not have money that this world would understand. Because, you know, other mm -hmm. world probably doesn't use the same currency. And immediately looks at his stuff and goes like, Trinkets is good. 
What have you got? Uh, <clears throat> he kind of looks through everything and just goes like, "How about how about a tiny little carving knife?" A knife. Hmm. Yeah. See her turn around and she has like a little bag on her side and she starts rummaging through it, making sure that you can't see like what she's looking in there. And then she pulls out um a like a sky blue colored wax candle and sets it on the table. Seem fair? It's a sea breeze. Ooh. He would put it down. He, okay. He's just like I, when I get home there's tons of those. If I get home there's tons of those. <laughs> It's fine. Okay. So, the game is simple. We play three rounds, and each round you roll a die. Uh You have six different dice, and each round, in secret, you choose which one you want to roll. Whoever rolls the lower number each round wins. And if you win, you get a number of points equal to how many sides that die has. Oh. Make sense? So you want to roll low on a big dice. Correct. Exactly. Got it. And you see him, like, kind of get into it in his head and thinking this through. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. Sound fair? Yep. All right. Um, and so there is, in this set, uh, there is a d4, a d6, a d8, a d10, a d12, and a d20. Gotcha. So basically a standard set minus the D100. Yep. Okay. All right, three rounds. Are you ready? Yep. Go ahead and pick your dial, and you can roll. Okay. What'd you get? Eight. Eight? Ooh, I rolled a ten. That's lucky. See, I told you you'd be good at this. Okay. Uh, Which die did you use? Eight. Twelve? All right, that's twelve points to you. Okay. Oh, and one last thing. Yeah. You can't reuse dice. Okay. So you watch him grab the D12 and like plunk it back into the pile. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right, let's try this again. Mm-hmm. What'd you get? You're not gonna believe it, but I actually got a one. A one. On which die? Six. Mm. You make a. You're not making this easy for me. We've got one more round. Yep. He plunks the one into the pile again. Mm-hmm. All right. One last roll. Yep. Ready when you are. All right. What is it? Sixteen. Sixteen? Ooh. That's a shame. I rolled a ten. On a d20. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so that was 18 points that you had. And she got... Yep. And she got 20. You see her smugly pick up the carving knife and add it to her bag. That's okay. You had some good luck to start. Surely it'll hold up for a second game. Uh, Come on, it's easy. It'd be real fun, but I I do... You know what? I'll I'll come back in like under 10 minutes, I promise. I just have somewhere I gotta be. How about you, mister? I don't know, lady. I was awfully convenient there right at the end. Oh, it was pure luck, nothing else. Mm. Come on, I'm sure I have something that'll interest you. How about... You see her rummage around in her bag again. Uh, and she pulls out a small, looks like a children's toy crossbow with a few rubber bolts. Does this suit your fancy? Perhaps? Hmm. I could turn that into a grapple and mount it on Bulldog. So what do you say? Surely you've got something interesting. Uh, All right, lady. You watch as Chuck just kind of like starts to do the Pink Panther sneak away as this. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna reach into my utility belt and start pulling out scraps of wire and metal, little stuff, and I'm gonna uh, use my use my tinkering real quick and make myself. Uh, let's see, just uh, what can I do here? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just I'm just gonna make myself like a like a blowhorn. Okay, handy there. 
just kind of press a button and it goes the burr, 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 burr. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Alright, I accept that. Is your dice? Fine. Okay. Pick your die and go ahead and roll. See whose luck is fancy. Okay. Uh, I'll roll a d20 to start. Okay. I got a nine. Ooh, that's too bad. I got a four. On a d8. Alright, fine. Roll again. Uh, no, the luck's not with me tonight. That's an 8 on a 12. Ooh, that's a 3 on a d6. That puts me up to 14 points. One last one? Well, fine. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick up the d4. And I'm gonna okay. grip it in my hand. And I'm going to turn the... Because I can, I can do this with my magical tinkering. On one of the faces of the d4, I'm gonna turn the 4 into a side that says 27. Okay. Which side do you turn into 27? The number four, which what would oh, be gotcha. a four the is now four. a 27. Gotcha, okay. No, I didn't get it. I got a two. Actually, oh. I would have wanted to roll low, so that didn't, that wouldn't work anyway. Oh, well. Hey, I thought you were going to call it like a 27-sided die and yeah. count it for yeah. 27 points. Hmm. Well, it looks like we tied on that one. What do you say we break the tie with a d20? Winner takes all. That's suspiciously generous of you, seeing as you're clearly winning. But sure! I roll it vigorously. Okay. And deflate as it rolls a 14. Ooh, a 13. That's unfortunate. And then she reaches over and takes the horn, toots it a couple of times. Well, it oh, was, that a was fun, kid. Let's you. get out of here. <laughs> Wait, one more round! I'm gonna, as, as I'm walking away, I pull out some more scrap and I make another blowhorn that just goes, no, 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 no! Wait, <laughs> Jeff just like, Jeff just kind of goes like, wait, he puts one finger up and just goes, we're on our way out, but I'm a little worried about something and I'm hesitant to ask, but let's, I want to figure something out. <clears throat> I'll play you when I come back, uh, but tell you what, just to prove that I'll play with you when you come when I come back. Uh, what's the best thing you think you got? Hmm. I'm a big fan of the color green. Green, huh? Ooh, I think I have just the thing. And she digs back into her bag for a few minutes. Um, and you see her pull out uh, what seems to be like an algae-stained conch shell. <sighs> Completely pristine, not cracked or chipped. But almost like a slimy green color. Visible relief. Because <clears throat> you know what he was thinking could have been in there. Uh, and he just kind of goes, oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> and he would put... He would put an ounce of ink, like in a bottle, a bottle of ink on the table. Okay. And just kind of be like, put that on hold. If I'm not back for it in the hour, it's yours. Hmm. She sort of picks it up and holds it up. Looks at it real close. Interesting. Some fine stuff. Okay, I'll take you up on that. And, and you he, see her stuff both of them into her bag? He does the two-figured salute and takes off. Okay. As he bolts with Doc, he just kind of goes, I needed to make sure that she didn't have the watch. No, I'm pretty sure that conch shell is worth more than your silly watch. Those things don't float. Okay, well, he would keep moving. Just be like, it's important to me. Um... So as you are uh, heading across, making your way with haste, um, starting to get to the other side of the city, you can see uh, at the base of where the bridge of the ship is, there is uh, sort of like a large uh, set of like double sliding doors that are sort of half open. And it looks like on the other end or inside is like an elevator or lift or some sort to get up into the bridge. Hey, uh, <clears throat> he would just immediately be like, "I've I've handled these before," <laughs> and would immediately just like press up to go to where he's got to go. As you try to walk up to the elevator, uh, you're suddenly stopped as a uh, a, a length of pipe swings inches away from your head, oh. arcing through the air, and you hear, "Stop!" And you look down, and there is a little red kobold um, wielding 
uh, length, that length of short length of pipe, although it is short, almost as long as he is. And he is dressed entirely and exclusively in leather belts that have been sort of draped across both shoulders to sort of create like a crisscross of just belts of brown and black covering his entire body. And even in a couple that are like wrapped around his head and neck. He puts the palms of his hands over his eyes, puts his fingers on his head, like where his scalp is, and just digs in for a second. He's like, okay, or fresh hell. <laughs> Hello! You have an appointment with the magnet? The mayor. It's at this moment that Treff decides, has to make the decision, do I bullshit? <laughs> <laughs> and he says, like, he sits on it and just goes, uh. It's a special case. <laughs> no appointment, no entry. Then he thinks about what he's learned about this place so far and just goes like, What if I told you that I could give you something really neat if you let me go up to the magnet and grab something that I lost? Tell more. Well, <laughs> he starts looking around and just realizing he has been starting- his, his inventory is shrinking by the second. <clears throat> He was like, well, you guys have a lot of water here. I imagine that there's not a lot of ways to make fire. Right? You see his eyes kind of light up for a second, and then he, like, blinks to sort of, like, hide his enthusiasm. Okay. I have a box that contains some steel, some flint, and some cloth soaked in oil, and you can use that to start a fire. And I have some torches that you can use to set on fire. Put those together, and you can keep yourself warm, light up pathways, maybe even light up the way to your mayor's office. Uh, sort of like the, the cobalt is starting to look a little like, sort of eyes running back and forth, and... May it says fire bad. Yeah. Well... But you can see there's sort of like an internal conflict going on. Could he use persuasion to kind of, like, sell sure. his tinderbox? <laughs> yeah, if you want to go ahead and roll a okay. persuasion check. Roll real quick. Plus six. That's 15. Mayor. No tell mayor. Okay. And then he puts his hands out. He puts the tinderbox and the torches in his hands and then does the zip the lip lock and throw away the key thing. Mm-hmm. Be fast! Mayor busy! Two fingered salute and then just kinda like hits the up button and he goes like as Doc shows up he's like, he's with me. <laughs> okay. Be fast. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and then he closes the thing and looks to Doc and just goes, So how am I doing? <laughs> Good enough, I guess. You've been shook down by half the residents here. <laughs> Yeah, well, when I get home, none of that stuff's gonna be too hard to re too uh, hard to replace. So, uh, as you hit the button to go to 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 ta have the elevator take you up, uh, it begins to move up slowly, and there is sort of like that soft, like generic elevator music playing as the two of you are slowly being elevated. Tell me about yourself. So you run this scrapyard? Yep. <clears throat> it seems you're really close to your machines. Uh... Best friends I've ever made. Get it? <laughs> yep. So, what made you want to do that? I mean, I guess everyone's kind of making what they can, but like... To make them into machines and friends. Like, that's... It's not something I've seen a lot of the others do. Well, there's a few of us that are particularly good with putting pieces together and making them do things. Yeah, I suppose I'd just get metal bits a little easier than I get the fleshy bits. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> See, I was, I was born with these legs that... Well, they just don't do anything. 
-hmm. It's real difficult to get around on a world built on water when you don't have any legs. Yeah. Yeah, I can understand. So I made my own! Good for you! That's awesome! They work a lot better now than uh, at the beginning. I was tripping over things, snapping, falling off. Yeah, well, that's any new piece, right? Gotta get used to it, break it in. Uh, I suppose. Well, it's like pretty accomplished with them now. Now, I got the best damn legs on all these boats. <laughs> I believe it. So, is everyone here, like, trying to wipe trinkets off people? Well, yeah, I suppose. What else is there to do? I mean, you got something cool, and I want it. You know, fair enough. <laughs> How the world works. You gotta learn that soon enough, kid, or you're uh, gonna wind up with empty pockets. Keep giving away all your stuff. Yeah, well, <clears throat> this time around, I'm willing to throw caution to the wind for the sake of getting that watch back. You know, I could make you a new watch. They're not that difficult. It's different. It's something from my home, and it does more than tell time, I'll tell you that. It's what lets me go from place to place. Think like the magic thing I pull to get in front of the dog, but like, a lot bigger. I thought I just blacked out for a second. No, I... I can do that. Move around, move through. I wasn't even born here. Well, I guess... I think the fashion choice kind of gives that away. <laughs> You've definitely noticed that Treffer has much less worn clothing than anyone else. Mm. So what boat did you take? Or did you build a raft? You know, I once heard somebody... Somebody flew in on a on a sky ship. That was exciting. Think of course, that. it crashed. Right. But it was still exciting. Well, the watch lets me move. It's like acts. It can send me instantly from one spot to another. Teleportation, you know. But no, like, no, I don't. Uh, again, like what I did to the dog to get in front of the dog. Got from one place and instantly showed up somewhere else. That thing runs on the power source, and when it gets to full charge, sends itself and whatever is wearing it somewhere else. Hmm. So, that's how I've been going from place to place. And I have a really good friend back where I come from, and she's probably more like you. Very good at metal bits. <laughs> And she's trying to figure out how to get it to bring me back home. And if I don't get it in time, it will be gone and I will never end up home. It's my one lifeline, basically. Sounds like a pretty risky design choice. Wasn't wasn't intended to be this way. <laughs> uh, call it a bit of a glitch, but it's what I gotta work with. Big. The oh, it's about damn time. Finally open. Um, they open to reveal ahead. Um, there is actually between you and the main part of the bridge uh, a helicopter pad over which um, the magnet that had previously snagged your belongings is hanging directly over and below it there is um, what seems to be sort of a uh, or at least what was once a helicopter with propellers that are sort of bent in and broken windows and the back uh, sort of tail end of it has sort of like uh, broken off and is laying like leaning against the base of it and uh, sitting on the ground with like the back propeller missing and just sort of like over it like pushed up against the side of it is just like a pile of um, random metallic garbage and like pieces of scrap metal and random little uh, metallic objects and other 
just random trinkets and things like that. Um, yeah. Just books it to the magnet. <laughs> Looking up at the magnet, um, it seems that it had been turned off, and there's not currently anything attached to it anymore. Is the pile, like, directly under it? Yes. He immediately starts pile, like, diving into the pile. Okay, make an investigation check. Oh, boy. Can I okay. assist with this at all? Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. All right, so you can roll with advantage. Oh, it's a good thing that you did that I could. The first roll was a 5, and the second one was a 12. Uh, oh. 12, and I have plus... Next to investigation. Let's go. Nice. So that yeah. is uh seventeen, I think. So twelve and six. Yeah. That's eighteen. Oh, nice. Okay. Um. So yeah. So you start uh, immediately digging through, looking for um that sort of familiar green shine from uh your watch that you're so desperately looking for, um, and sort of giving like a thorough sort of comb through the surface of this pile of garbage that has been building up for who knows how long, you don't see the watch. You also don't see Doc Rizzo's drone anywhere either, among the debris. Ah, uh, damn scavers every time. Ah, alright. Gotta start building a tracker on these things. What do we do? Well, I gotta be around here somewhere. So we just shake down everyone in town? I mean, I could just build myself a new uh, a new rotocopter, but I don't think we got the parts to make some weird, magical time shifter doohickey. No, we most certainly do not. Um, excuse me? What do you think you're doing? Uh, and you see walking around the the body of that helicopter, um, this yellow skinned tiefling woman woman wearing like like a suit jacket, but one that is very like threadbare. Um, and it just has like a bunch like all the way from like shoulder all the way down the jacket are a bunch of like poorly sewn extra pockets, like down the front of the uh, of the jacket. I'm looking is this the for... mayor? Yeah. <laughs> this is mayor. Look, what what you can I do you for, esteemed mayor lady? Uh, and who are you exactly? I'm taken aback, miss. I'm Doc Rizzo. You know me, I built all kinds of stuff for you, I'm sure. Oh, um Yeah, sure. I, I'm I'm honored? Um and who are you? Uh the name is Treffer. Uh I'm looking for a watch. He describes it. Um and looking uh as she has sort of like walked around and looking at her, um, you begin to notice through uh, the uh, the pretty worn front of the jacket in one of the many pockets. There is a familiar but faint green glow emanating from within. A, a watch. I'm sorry. There are many watches around here. Um, but uh. If you have come for something, I hope you have brought me something in return. Surely you know our way of life? What are you in the market for? Well, I'm into all sorts of trinkets and baubles, and oh, I especially love shiny things. (sighs) Like glowy things. Oh, I found something very nice today. You, you don't say. Ooh, yes. It was a nice haul today. Did it also include a, a drone, a little roto thing? Oh, funny you mentioned I swung my magnet over there over some 
some schmuck's junkyard and, you know, just picked it up. <laughs> oh, well, it would be better in my hands than anyone else's. I think... And you I see her pull... Um, you see her pull the drone out of one of the pockets and just sort of, like, play with it. And, like, sort of rolling it in her hand and pushing it around with her fingers. Now, if I could just figure out how to turn it on. Can I just uh, command it to fly back to me? <laughs> like, it okay. is my, air quotes, familiar. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so it, it takes off out of her hand and floats over to you. Oh, I don't... Wow. That is handy. All right, now how do I get it to come back? Uh, return! Just hovers there. <laughs> hey, um, back up, I think you're in the way. And she sort of, like, comes up and doing, like, a shooing motion at you. As she goes up, can Treff pickpocket the wall? <laughs> All right, uh, roll a sleight of hand check. I only have a plus three to this. This is probably going to end poorly. Uh, can I... Can I... Do I do I notice this? I mean, probably. Um, uh, what is your what's your passive perception? My passive perception is thirteen. Maybe not. Uh, you know, what, I'll say. Uh, depending, uh, I'll have Trevor roll once, and if if he rolls lower than a thirteen, I will let you assist. I'm not joking. It's exactly thirteen. Mm -hmm. Okay, then um, you would notice it. Yeah, 13 oh, 13 plus? plus? Yep. My modifier is 3, because he has good dex. <clears throat> so it's 16? Yep. Oh, okay. So you would not notice. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm just I'm just having Roto do the... Like, it's gonna hover hover upwards every time she goes to swipe for it. <laughs> okay, yeah, and she does start doing that. Um, I'm just, I'm just gonna like... step backwards a few steps with my arms crossed, just watching this. Mm -hmm. And he would uh, take his spell focus orb his little crystal, mm -hmm. uh, and drop it in the pocket in return. Okay. Because I like to think that the watch probably also does spell stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. So he has his wizard one, and he has the watch, which has been doubling as his. So I think he kind of is able to do the weight swap, you know? Yeah, got it, got it. Um, and she doesn't seem to notice, just sort of distracted and like, get, get back here! God, I, God, I turn this darn thing off! They're real tricky, miss. Hold on, I, I've got something for this. And she turns and pulls something out of her pocket, and you see her uh, pull out, like, a, a, a spear fishing gun. Okay. And points it up at the drone. Well, you don't want to go and use that. You're going to blow it to pieces. What good is it if you blow it to pieces? Oh, it's still shiny, isn't it? Well, there's lots of other shiny things. Oh, I want this one. It's mine! Ooh, I have an idea. Treff okay. is going to use Minor Illusion uh, with his newfound watch spell focus. He's going to, like, make, like, something appear on the magnet. Like, just a very shiny bobble appear where the magnet would be. Almost as if, like, oh, the, the boss of magnets, it, something's still up there. Oops, you know? Do you point it out to her? Yeah, he's just like, oh, you missed something. Look at that. That's really real shiny. And he purposely puts his hand with the watch in his pocket and points with his own hand. Okay. Uh, she sort of looks over, um, away for, from the drone for a moment. Looks over. It's still up there? I swear I turned that thing off. No, well, you know how it goes. With faulty tech and all that. And you see him immediately taking, like, two steps back towards the elevator. Okay. <laughs> I. You see her sort of like swinging the spear gun like toward the drone and then looking back at the magnet. And back and forth and. Put my like, drone back. Uh, she's gonna fire. The spear gun. What's the AC of the drone? Um. Uh, let's see, this is. Yeah, this is this is not Roto. This is Tank. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is it has an AC of eleven. Okay. Uh, so 
So the spear hits. Okay. And it does um, six points of piercing damage. Cool. Well, it has one HP, so it explodes. Oh. <laughs> As the sort of pieces rain down, um, with like one of them having like a big barbed metal rod in it uh, at her feet, she's like, "There, now I can have both." And she I'll see. Why'd you have to go and do that? Well, I wouldn't come back down. I didn't want the wind blowing it away. And she sort of starts, like, picking up the pieces of the drone and takes, like, the the spear with, like, the main, like, uh, like, the main body of the drone on, like, the end of the spear and, like, starts just, like, stuffing pieces into pockets all over her jacket. Oh, man. <clears throat> it's too late. Oh, well. I just, I just had a thought. <laughs> Treff just kind of turns to, to Doc and just like, what do we do? Are you all right? It'll take some time to make another one. Well then, anyway, uh, what was your business with me? You know what? I think we're okay. I apologize. Uh, he puts the one hand up but keeps the other one in his pocket. Uh, have a great day. It's clear that tensions are high. So, another time. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna go turn the magnet pack off. Uh, make an appointment next time, okay? Sure. And then she turns and leaves. Will do. And as she leaves, he turns to Doc and just, as soon as her eyes are off, lifts his arm just a bit to show the watch is there, and then does the like, move, like finger move, like we gotta move. Have you put it back on? Uh, yes. Okay. So, I'll meet you back down at the bottom of the elevator. You go on ahead. Okay. And I lift up my big metal arm and I press a few buttons here and turn a few dials and turn invisible. Okay. I act I activate my uh my invisibility shield. I'm casting spell invisibility. Yeah. Got it. Treff like feels so much better, but immediately starts to head back to the elevator. But he doesn't press the down button. He stays like on the elevator shaft and waits. Just in case. Okay. So what I would like to do, uh, mm -hmm. I would like to go while this uh, while this lady has turned around and walked back behind the uh, the broken helicopter. Mm -hmm. I'd like to take uh, some some decently sized piece of metal. Uh, and some other little bits and bobs here, maybe some uh, some some cabling or something. And I want to make like maybe maybe a buckle here and there from a seatbelt, uh, and make some sort of just like metal vest thing. Okay. Um, make just make like an investigation check just to find like all the parts you need. Okay. Uh, that is, in fact, a natural 20 for a 26. All right, yeah. Um, yeah, in just a couple of minutes you find, and, uh, or honestly, not even that, it takes you about 30 seconds, moving with quick hands and your one modified arm, quickly snapping pieces together right as you spot mm -hmm. them, and getting this vest put together. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't need to be particularly well made. I'm, I'm purposely going really quick here, mm -hmm. uh, because I, what I want to do is I want to rush over to the woman just as she gets to the magnet for when she goes to flip the switch and uh -huh. strap this metal vest to her so when she accidentally turns it on, she gets flung up to the magnet. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, so you see her walking over to the other end, and there is sort of like a, a panel right outside of the door um, with like a bunch of big red like levers on them. Um and uh, as you're approaching to uh, to try to slap this uh, metal vest on her, roll a stealth check with advantage. Uh, can I actually do this a different way? I'd like to okay. play around with my uh, exo legs 
and plug in some extra components here and supercharge them with Long Strider. And I would just like to blitz her. Still invisible because Long Strider is not a concentration spell. Of course, you'd see this floating metal vest thing, but I would just want to blitz at her faster than she can move. Okay. Um, let's just do. Uh, I'll do do a general dexterity check with advantage. Okay. Because you have the supercharged legs. Sure. 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 Uh, that was an eleven or a nineteen for a total of twenty-one. Okay. Um, yeah, you rolled higher. So yeah, uh, as you're coming up, um, she starts. She's like starting to turn around, but by but before she can even realize what's going on, you're already behind her, and you slam the vest down um, just as she was pulling the lever to activate the magnet. Um, and the first thing that happens is a lot of the random pieces of scrap metal and other things that were directly below it, it begins to sort of like rain up and stick to the top of the magnet. Um, and uh, you start, you see her starting to get like pulled back and you feel a tug on yourself as well. Um, uh, although not as, not as strong, um, but like on your uh, sort of um, robotic uh, modifications on your body. Um, but she does end up uh, or well, let me have her... Okay, that's not high enough. She does end up uh, trying to grasp and like hold on to like one of the levers on the panel, but her hand slips, and she ends up getting pulled up to the air, moving faster as she gets closer to the magnet, and then slamming into the back of it, uh, sort of getting mixed in with the other pieces of random junk and stuff that got stuck up there. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to long strider my way back, Blowing my no horn. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, come back here! You no, can't no, do no, this no. To me. <laughs> no, 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 no! Hey, what are you doing? <laughs> and you're just going to the elevator? Yep. All right. Uh, presumably, it's already gone down to the bottom with uh with with Trev. No, Trev said he was waiting. Oh, was he? Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. He opens the gate for you and then just closes it and just goes, nice. <laughs> Nobody messes with old Doc Rizzo. I'm a smart one. <laughs> he presses the down button and as he leaves, he waves to the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he waves. You can't do this to me! He waves with the hand with the watch and like points to it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You know, this is probably going to have all kinds of blowback. He looks, he tilts his uh, arm at the watch and looks at its percentage and he goes like, seems like it, but uh, I won't be around for it. Yeah, you check and the watch seems like it is just finishing getting charged up. And with the slow descent you have on the way back, or on the way down, it seems like it's going to be fully charged before you make it to the bottom of the ride. He kind of flashes it to him and looks and goes like, We made it just in time, huh? Well, just in time for you, anyway. Hey, I'm sure you'll pull through. You're Doc Rizzo. Yeah, there might be something to that skyship idea. Make a make a new a new drone. A bigger one this time. Big enough for you to have a place outside a year. Yeah. With a larger harpoon gun. Do you think he has enough time to, like, copy something, like, onto a piece of paper? Sure. He would look and through his spell book and uh, make it to probably. Oh, yes. He will copy down the notes for haste. And okay. then hand it to him on a slip of paper, and he goes. Just in case you need to supercharge those legs even further. Uh, well, I don't know what what all these squiggles mean, but I uh, guess I'll figure it out. He goes like, "It's some, it's a trick that I can pull off that makes things go real fast." So just in case you need your legs to move even quicker. Well, it good also to know. Works, it also works on other objects too, so you can make your mega drone move real fast if you need. Mm. Speedy Bulldog. Seems like a good getaway. 
in case the mayor ever comes after you. Yeah, yeah. Well, thanks, kid. Not a problem, thank you. I wouldn't have known my way around if it weren't for you. I wouldn't be able to go anywhere. <laughs> well, it was actually, uh, for this place, a relatively uneventful little jaunt. You know what? I'm not even gonna ask. <laughs> Oh, I just realized that Lee's super gonna take my ink. <sighs> you know what? Whatever. When I get home, I'll be able to hand make more. It's fine. But, uh... Hey, if I'm ever in the neighborhood again, uh... Actually show me around your scrapyard, yeah? Sure. Sure. Uh... I'm gonna I'm gonna reach reach in uh, into one of my tactical belt pockets and put a, pull out a, a miniature rubber ducky. Mm -hmm. Here you go, kid. Don't remember me by. He, he, he squeaks in. This is like you have no idea how much this means. Squeaks in, and then he puts it in his his pocket the way he tried to pocket the first one at the start, mm -hmm. and just kind of does the two finger salute and just goes like, "See you around." And as you are sort of finishing the salute, um, you both see as the watch begins to grow with a, an ever uh, a high intensity bright light that fills up the entire um, elevator almost to a blinding extent. Um, and when it subsides, Trevor has once again jumped to another universe. Pull out a pull out a cigar and lay a stick in my mouth. Take a big long drag and exhale. Man, I need, really need to lay off these things. And that concludes our show for this evening. We hope you enjoyed Episode 7, City Electric. Tonight's story was told by the following incredibly talented people. Our game was run by Bravin at DM Chronicles. Doc Rizzo was played by Jack at People's Ascension. Rizara, voiced by Midnight Blue. And Trevor Vantross, voiced by Biba17. Our lead writer is Biba17, and editing for this episode was done by Radio at DooDooDoo90. Our theme song was composed by Zach at Schedule for Launch. You can learn more about the world of DM Chronicles on Twitter at DM Chronicles. And catch them live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash dmchronicles. And if you would like to stay up to date on all things parallel to anywhere, you can follow us on Twitter at p2anywhere and join our Discord to be a part of our community. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe on YouTube or rate us five stars on Spotify. Thank you so much for listening. We hope to see you again soon. Whenever that may be.